Oh, how you guys doing? Hey, Gabriel, how are you? Show a little quick stream. I felt inspired. I think we're good. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Very cool. Oh, welcome to the stream. Cold, long, and prosper. I'm Steph. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'm going to wait for a few more people to get on, then I'll jump into the subject with a few Q&A questions. I can't do... I can't do as much as I... Uh, we're not going to be an hour-long stream. It's going to be a bit of a short one because i got to head out soon. I figured I'd pop in. So, yeah, if you're new here, I'm Steph. Welcome to the stream, Code Long and Prosper. I've uh, borrowed this from Star Trek, so here we go. All right. Uh, all right, let's do it. So when the uh, timer gets down to zero, then we'll get into the subject at hand. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Hope everybody is well. Hello, 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 Arthur. Uh, Enoch, Gabriel. Hey, how are you, Maha? Uh, Gabriel, Manuel. Hey, All right, so we'll get this down. Algeria. How do I start to learn? How do I learn Java? <laughs> hey, Matthew Aria. It's been a long time since I've done a stream. So, yeah. Let me get this music down. I hope everybody is well. So, uh, let me just, it's going to be a quick topic and then I'll do a little Q&A. So, if you have any questions, uh, get them ready and I'll cover them. So, I get this all of the time from people. How, you know, how do you choose your career in code, right? There's so many different types of development and coding you can do. You know, you can do full stack, front end, back end. You can do React, you can do Vue. You can do game development. You can do scripting for server farms, AI. There's so many different things that you can do. So how do you choose which one to use, right? What do you do? So that's what we're going to cover in this video a little bit. Uh, the answer may surprise you. So number one, uh, you have to look around at the job opportunities. So do some searches, PHP developer jobs, Python developer jobs, uh, uh, whatever, Ruby developer jobs, C Sharp, Java, etc. So you got to start looking at the market, get a feel for it a little bit. This way, you don't find yourself lusting over, say, you want to do flash action script development, then you find out there's no jobs in that as an extreme example. So that's number one. Number two, um, you have to tr figure out what type of development you want to do. You see, if you're doing front end, it's very different from, well, it's not very different, but it's different from full stack. If you're doing Python Django, different from working, let's say, with, uh, as Matthew does, Drupal and PHP, et cetera. Game engine development, very different game. You get the idea. So you may be somebody who loves to uh, build engines. That may be your thing. You may be somebody who's much more inclined to front-end development. So you got to figure out what you like. Because at the end of the day, it's so important. You have to like what it is you do every day. You should be able to get up in the morning and say, oh, this is cool. I like doing this kind of work. Because even if you're making a lot of money, if you don't like doing the work, you know, it's not going to be uh, it's not going to be fun for you, even if you're making a ton of money. So keep that in mind. So I assume everybody can hear me, by the way. I assume you can hear me. If you can, uh, put in the comments. We can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, welcome to the stream. My name is Steph, Uncle Steph. So yeah, make sure, underline that. Make sure you like which uh, what the type of work you're going after. That said, how do you determine this? Well, the steps you got to take is you got to learn your fundamentals and the fundamentals of coding and development. So I teach the web fundamentals because it's, it's the most diverse, allows for the most opportunities in terms of jobs and the type of work that you're gonna do. Uh, yeah, so what's this Google tell me here? Hold on. Google says insert an ad, so you're gonna get an ad now. All right, I don't know. Ad inserted, whatever. So, um, okay, good, you can hear me. Yeah, so you got to figure out what you like. So how do you figure out what you like? You learn your fundamentals first. 
And then from there, once you have those fundamentals understood, fundamentals code, then you, you will have the nerd eyes. You have the ability to understand the landscape and you'll be able to make intelligent decisions, decisions about the type of work that you'd want to do. Then from there, you uh, look at the job market, you look at the job and work opportunities, and then you can concentrate accordingly. Another thing you got to consider is whether or not you want to be a freelancer, whether or not you want to start your own business, whether or not your ultimate goal is to work for a large organization, maybe you want to work for a smaller organization where you have a little bit more autonomy, it's more friendly, less bureaucratic. I don't know. These are all choices you have to make which will dictate ultimately where you're going to focus your efforts in terms of study and so on. So if you follow these basic principles I talked about here, you're going to have a much more um, profitable, believe it or not, career and a much more enjoyable career. And there you go. And if you throw in a little FU money strategy, a little dollar cost investing strategy, uh, you'll be in a good position in no time at all. All right, how are we doing? All right, small group today, 53. If you like the subject of this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, we're a small group so far, but you know, I popped in the, the live. It was uh, unforeseen live. So that's why. So yeah, I appreciate the like. So let me go to the questions. Let me go to the questions and see what we got here. All right. Hey, Matthew, how are you? Matthew's a Drupal developer. So, uh, I'm in Maryland. I, awesome. We got some old school. Yeah. By the way, in the comments, do as Enoch here says, 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 says let us know where you are from. It's kind of cool to know from what parts of the world and the country that people are from. So you got Enoch Osepoku from Maryland. You got Franz Dobbins from Wisconsin, from Baltimore. Uh, Mr. Serious Cat. Hey, Fizz007. What do you think about Golang? Golang is a specialized language. Look around, see what the job opportunities are. The general rule when you're assessing any technologies, you can't just look at the technologies in of themselves in terms of their technical attributes and pluses and minuses. You also have to consider the work environments. You know, Golang may be the best thing ever, but if there's not too many jobs in Golang, it may not be the wisest choice to pursue. That said, let's say you did learn Golang, and anybody who knows my stuff knows the answer to all this. If you did learn Golang and you've pivoted to another language, it's, it's no big deal. The first language is the hardest one to learn takes the longest, and the second, you'll get it done in 10% of the time, and the third, and 5% of the time, and the fourth, and you know, you get the idea. Uh, in my career as a freelancer, in the last few years uh, as freelancer, I would go to a contract, and I would have no expectations in terms of what language I would use. Sometimes it would be Java, that was my favorite, sometimes it would be PHP, sometimes it would be some domain-specific language, you know, it really varied quite a bit, VB, it was crazy all over the place. And that's when you know you're a pro developer, when the language is become secondary. Uh, you're not like the zealot wanting to only code in this language or that language, because you learn over time that the languages and the frameworks all have their pluses and minuses. Oh, well, you can have your favorite. There's no problem about that, but yeah. Uh, so that's my answer about Golang. Yeah. Take a look. Hi, from London. It's 10 p.m. here. All right, London, UK. How you doing? Uh, good town. I like that town. Frankfurt. Huh? Very cool. Never been to Frankfurt, but I'm sure you got great beer. What's the first step to switch from, excuse me, what's the first step to switch from front end to back end? Learn the request response cycle. Get into relational databases. Hey, Fizz. Typing speed important. It is not important. That will come increase uh, as you write code and also with code editors and, and AI generators is typing speed is not typing is not the bottleneck meaning typing and your lack of speed and in typing initially is not going to be the reason why you're slow coders so don't worry about typing speed I'll say it again typing speed is not important hi hey Steph I'm in downtown Montreal hey how are you man would love to have a coffee fizz 007 well we'll see it uh, depends on uh, time, time. 
See, I'm old. I'm 169 years old, so I have to be very careful about where I allocate my time. Uh, we can hear you. Very good, very good. Appreciate it. Yes, yes. Okay, everybody can hear me. That's good. Good thing. I ask that because sometimes I forget to switch a switch somewhere, and I'll start talking and nobody can hear me, so... The most valuable kind of software development is by bringing value to people and especially businesses. This is where the money is. Yeah, ultimately, if you're a developer, you are a, you are a service provider. You are providing a service for somebody. So that includes technical skills, but also communication skills. Uh, some people call that soft skills. Uh, you know, delivering on time. If you say you're going to deliver on Friday, you better deliver on Friday. You know, even better, deliver on Thursday. Soup, Drupal sucks. PHP is great. <laughs> All right. Hey, Stefan, doing studio web validation of Python automation, software validations. Yeah. It is worth to learn Django and switch to web. Thanks. Well, I would just check into that. See if you like that kind of work. See what kind of Django jobs are in your area and take it from there. What lifestyle advice would you give a newcomer to Canada, Montreal? Ah, lifestyle stuff. Well, Montreal is a, uh, a great city for public transport, especially the metro system right in the core of the city. Uh, yeah, so that's one part of it. Uh, so if you're living close to a metro, it makes your, your ability to get around the city quite easy. That's for sure. I think uh, lifestyle. Yeah, that's it. So you don't need a car in Montreal, you know? You don't need a car. You don't need wheels. You, the, the tr public transport is good. Warsaw, Poland. Hey, welcome to the stream. Cold long and prosper. I got the best Boca in town. Boca is blurriness. Blurry hand. Uh, U.S., Indiana, London, U.K. Hey, Arthur. How are you? Welcome back. <laughs> long time no see. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm feeling uh, I got some piss and vinegar in me today because I ate a nice steak. That will do it every time. Downtown Montreal, yeah, very cool. Seattle, very good. Warsaw, Paul, we got that. Can you help choose between React Native and Flutter? You know, I, I can't give you a definitive answer there because a lot of times these decisions between framework A and B, language A and B, comes down to sp the specifics of the project at hand. Certain types of projects, I would imagine React is better than Flutter and vice versa. So you have to... Uh, Assess this accordingly. Now, if you're just looking at it from a jobs point of view, I would just do a little work out there and see where the jobs are at. How many React jobs are there? And how many Flutter jobs are out there? But don't just look at the raw number of jobs. You know, Let's say there's 100 React jobs and only 10 Flutter jobs. You may go, oh, I better learn React. But if there's 100 React programmers and there's only five Flutter programmers, then Flutter would be the better choice, right? So you want to consider all these things. Budapest, Hungary, yeah, very cool. The Ukraine, I hope everything, oh, excuse me, I hope everything is well for you. Stay safe. I'm Ukrainian, Mishuk, right? Um, I have family there. Hello, I am from St. Louis, but I live in San Diego. Huh? Very, <laughs> very good. What software coding would you go, oh, excuse me, what software coding would go good with web development, i.e. Python, Java? You know, unless you want to work for large organizations, I would not go with Java or C Sharp, although they're very capable languages. My favorite language uh, was Java. If you want, um, I would choose personally uh, JavaScript or PHP. And uh, I would choose... Um, PHP if you want to freelance, but both are pretty good. San Antonio. Hey, man. How are you, Karim? Uh, Vish from, from New York, graduated boot camp, but having a hard time getting any interviews. Any suggestions? I know JS, React, Python. Build your portfolio site. Go out and do two to three small projects. Two to three small projects. You should be good. All right. Golang is trash, horrible language for big projects. So there you go. I've never used it, so I don't have an opinion on it. But uh, don't just listen to any one comment. There's, you get 10 different programmers in a room, and you're going to have 12 different opinions about something. Is there any good free resources on learning data structures and algorithms, or and are they necessary to really understand how to program? They are not necessary to learn how to program. Any decent beginner's course will teach you the basics 
of data structures and the very basics of algorithms. These requirements are largely built from, I've talked about this in other videos, um, for 99% of programming, data structures and algorithms are not important, but for certain um, medium to larger companies, they will test you for whatever reasons on algorithms and data, data uh, excuse me, data structures. So yeah, they're not, not super important, especially with uh, pr apps like uh, Chat GPT, which will be able to write super good algorithms in uh, short order. Hello, welcome. Go long and prosper. Uh, Mr. Uh, I guess glasses from Iran. Hello, one time you said Node.js is a mess. Do you think that, still think that is? I haven't looked at it in years. Uh, NPM specifically was a mess when I looked at it, but that was years ago. I've heard anecdotally, anecdotally? Anyway, I've heard some random developers have told me it's still a mess. I don't know. What does that mean? That means that uh, there's a lot of um, packages there's a lot of libraries that you can use in your projects and you can you know, write a few command lines and whoosh, download the packages or, uh, or have a reference to them. And sometimes they update them and then they break your, your, uh, your app. Apparently they do that. I haven't looked at it in years, so I don't know. You have to go do some, see what the, uh, the scuttlebutt is about that. See what people are saying. Yeah. I appreciate, I appreciate the thumbs up so that the Google gods are happy. Let's make the Google gods happy. Uh, hello. Peter says hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Uh, Roy. What's Roy saying here? Hey, Steph. Roy from the UK here. Been watching for years. First time I've seen you live. Ah, well, thanks for watching the streams, well, the videos. Uh, I used to do a lot more live streams, but uh, life happens. You know, I like doing the streams. I, I'm going to try to get back on it, but no promises in, ter in terms of timeline. But I will get back on it at some time, sometime soon. How well you must know your first learned language before moving to the second one? That's a good question. Yeah, you know your way around the basics, you know. Uh, you know, let's say it was JavaScript, you know, functions and, you know, the DOM, you know, DOM scripting. You understand, you know, you can create, uh, you can create functions and classes. Uh, you're comfortable with that whole thing. Yeah. Then you can move on to the next thing. Ironically, when you go on to the second language, let's say you learn JavaScript first, the second language will be um, much easier to learn. And B, you'll get more of an understanding of JavaScript by learning Python. Uh, Adonis has a question. Let me scroll down to that. Super chat here. Uh, Stefan, I am attending a coding boot camp here in Seattle and work in IT for a hospital. Is a boot camp degree sufficient at least at entry level jobs? Depending on the boot camp, the key is to be able to show you have the skill. And I've talked about this in many videos. Um, the, the way you show you have the skill is in my boot camp, links below, unclesteph.com. In my boot camp, I have people run through the fundamentals, do their certifications. Then they build their promotional demo site. Then they go out and do two to three small free freelance gigs, put that on their, their resume promo site. And then with that, they go out and uh, secure work or uh, start freelancing. That's the process that I use. I hope that helps out. Uh, well, I'm going back up here. Uh, my birthday is tomorrow. I'll be 143. Oh, boy. He's young. Well, happy birthday, Matthew. Uh, is it a good strategy to focus on only Java, Java and Master? The strategy is to get yourself to a point where you understand enough about code that you can start building things. You want to start building things. You don't want to get caught in tutorial hell, you know? Some recruiters reach me for unrelated jobs, what they think telling... What they think telling to a JavaScript developer best fit for jobs like Haskell, C++, C Sharp, is it a common thing? Yeah, you know, there's such a demand for developers uh, that they, they're looking around for any developer. So they'll try to shoehorn you if they can because they make money, right? That's, you know, if they, they can get you to get, if they can get you hired, the company hiring you will pay them good money. So, you know, advice for JS and React. Just learn the DOM, learn basic JavaScript well, 
and then learning React will be far, far easier and far, far quicker. Is it meaningful to compare back-end and front-end in terms of earnings? Yeah, generally speaking, back-end developers, generally, not always, but generally back-end full stack will make more money than pure front-end, depending on the type of front-end that you do. You know, but just, just go look around, see what the job market demands. Hello, Hassan, greetings. Where does VMware and networking fit back in, in back end should developing? Hmm. You're not going to be writing too much networking code. I don't know if you're referring to that. Uh, VMware, I used to use VMware when I was on Windows all the time, just to create uh, virtual machines of uh, configurations. So let's say I was working on project A that required a certain type of configuration uh, you know, for a version of PHP or version of Java or a version of Python or something. So I would create a, that, uh, I, keep, I would create that container, create that, that uh, configuration, install it there. So when I needed to launch into that, I just go click and I would, it would have the configuration ready. Um, hold on, got another super chat. I give super chats priority because I would be, uh, I wouldn't be nice of me if I didn't. Super chat. I appreciate the coffee, guys. Cheers. Thanks. Uh, take first jab, dev job that codes VB and web forms. Yeah, for sure. If you got a dev job and um, it's your first, take it. The most important thing about your first web job is that you get it. Let me say that again. The most important thing about your first web job is that you get it. Because once you have that experience, even with VB and web forms, you're gaining experience. So when you're getting ready for the next job, you'll be far, far more interesting to the prospective employer. So yeah, congrats. Take that job, Casey. Yeah, Arthur's got it right. See, the key to becoming a, a high paid web developer is to get that first job as quickly as possible. You're not gonna learn the secret sauce of code and then get the high paying job. The key, the key, the secret sauce, the quick route, learn your fundamentals, get that first job. Even that's great. You know, uh, VB web forms, fantastic. Why not get it? You get that experience, then your value, every month of experience that you have building real, writing real code that's used in production, no matter what code it is, your value as a developer shoots up. So you want to get out of tutorial hell. I could do that. I could create all kinds of tutorials. Hey, you got to buy this tutorial. You got to buy this tutorial. I don't do that because it's not actually what works. Just look, look up tutorial hell. It's a thing. Don't want to get into that. No problem, man. Congratulations. Good job. Do a good job. Uh, work extra hard for his first job. And uh, learn, 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 learn. The first three to four years in your first job is you learn a lot. You learn a lot as a developer. So you want to get that first job. So you want to work extra hard, pay your dues, and then you're going to write your ticket. You're going to get the red carpet treatment for the rest of your career. So it's worth it. So consider that first job. The first few years of development, consider an extended the extension of your coding. Just like medical doctors, they do years of school and then they do what, four years, of, I think they call it res, 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 residency. There we go, I got it. Where they go around and they, they, uh, they ghost doctors and they learn the job while working, super long hours. So you gotta do the same thing, earn your stripes. And then we go back up, see if uh, I can't get everybody. Wow, almost almost half an hour. Time flies. Um, well, thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, hello. Any quality content to learn Spring Boot? Udemy? I'm sure there are good courses on Udemy, but, uh, you know, there are good courses. Look at the reviews and stuff, but uh, there's also lots of crap courses too, so keep that in mind. Have you spent any time on in? Have you spent any time in Web three? No, I have not. What are your thoughts on heading into blockchain space and building DApps? I think blockchain does have a future. I have no idea how it's going to shake out. Uh, just like you know, back in the dot com bubble days, I was around. Uh, most of the companies have failed. Everybody knew the you know a lot of people were saying the web's going to be the next big thing, and it was. It is, but most of the businesses failed. And there was a lot of stuff that we did back then that was not very good. That's just normal. So I have no idea how blockchain and Web3 is going to uh, work out. That said, I think it's going to be a niche language. The reason the web took over is because it did something 
that no other technology could do effectively, like not even close. And it was key. Whereas Web3, it's, it does other, it does things that it, it's unique to it, but it's very niche in its application, which suggests to me that it's going to be a niche environment to jump into. I hope that makes sense. Whenever you're looking at any technologies, languages, frameworks, you've got to consider business considerations as well, not just how cool the language is. you got to you got to take off your geek hat and you got to put on your business hat and try to examine things both ways. That's what I always do. I started coding in 1994. And for me, the first languages uh, chosen were based on my business needs. I didn't choose what I chose because, oh, this is really cool. I really like this stuff. No, it's like, this is what I need to use to get the job done that I need to get done. So think of it that way, and you're going to be much better off as a, uh, a dev, you know. How many, how many years do you have uh, made programming? I made programming since 1994. But in the last many years, I am uh, I much, I'm architect. I do code inspections once in a while. Uh, you have to make a choice in your career as a developer, whether you're going to stay coding or you're going to go into architecture management. You can't do both. It's impossible. So I did it for many years uh, full time uh, as a contractor and freelancer. Uh, I contracted with some big companies and I freelanced some big companies too. How many hours a day should I study programming? Minimum 20 minutes, maximum four hours. Why maximum four hours? Because your cognitive capacity uh, peaks out typically at four hours and then your uh, comprehension and um, retention of what it is that you're looking at will just plummet. So it's almost pointless to go past four hours, maybe five, depending on the individual, depending on how much water you drink in a day, how rested you are. Generally speaking, where do I get this information? I've been working in schools for over a decade in terms of delivering curriculum, and I have my major in university was psychology. So yeah, there you go. Uh, hey, Steph, hope you're well. I am. Hey, Jamming Coder, how are you? Code long and prosper. If you're new to the channel, I borrowed this from Star Trek. In Star Trek, the this Vulcans would say, live long and prosper. I say, code long and, well, prosper and profit. I think I say profit. Code long and profit. By the way, right under this video, right at the top, there's a link to my Discord. We have a Discord with over 3,000 people now, good group, managed by some great moderators. And I invite you to take a look. Just join below. It's free. And there's a bunch of great people on there of all levels, friendly community, respectful, good place to learn, interact with other developers. Some, some have teamed up on projects together. So yeah, link below. It's the code, uh, yeah, it's the code long and profit Discord channel. It's down below. Link below. Uh, okay. There's a message for somebody from Arthur. Is Node.js a mess? Then what backend framework do I learn for JavaScript? Well, Node is not a framework. Node is an engine. Uh, there are other, I've, there's other ones out there. The guy who created Node created his own. I not. I don't track the big news in JavaScript lately, so I couldn't say. But just poke around, ask around. You know. All right. Uh, hey, Steph. I've been a film editor for the past twenty years. Cool, cool. Then, for economic reasons, at the age of 45, I decided to learn a new skill that would be challenging. I'm starting with Python. Good idea? Sure, why not? I think you'll find a lot more jobs in the web space, you know, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP. But Python's cool because you learn Python. It's a nice, approachable language, good language. There are jobs in that, too. But a lot of jobs are in data science and AI, so it requires a whole set of other skills besides coding. But you learn Python, and then you, for you to learn JavaScript will be like pretty cool, pretty quick. So yeah, good. Go for it, man. Go for it. Uh, you may want to check out my mentoring program, Shameless Self Promotion. Uh, anyone else learning code for the money? Most people are learning. I was only learning code. I think most people, if they're honest with themselves, they're, they want to code because not all, but a lot of people, if not the majority. They want to code because they see that there's a lot of money involved in that. So, yeah, that's cool. Hey, Steph, are you educated or have been you learned the language self? Uh, I started learning to code in 1994. Well, commercially, I started writing commercial code in 94, although I was learning to code a little bit in the 80s. I don't count that. 
Anyway, so um, no, I learned that as we went because what I was learning was the bleeding edge stuff. So there was no schools per se, or there were few and far between. There were no boot camps. There were no online videos. The web was useless for that. I had to. I would buy these thick computer books. I would spend three to four thousand dollars a year in 1990s money on coding books and software development books because I realized that. You know, if you're spending three, four thousand dollars a year on coding books, but you're making a hundred, two hundred thousand a year, what the hell is three, four thousand? It's nothing. So it was a worthwhile investment. You know, don't skimp, don't skimp on your your investment in yourself. By the way, Warren Buffett, one of the most famous and successful investors, multi billionaires. I think he's the fifth richest person, sixth richest person in the world. He says the best investment you can make is in yourself. So don't skip out on that. Uh, hey, Steph, has anyone reported on to on how many girls they pulled using Lizzy Wizzy? <laughs> I don't know. I should get some reports, right? If you don't know, I put out a course called Lizard Wizard, links below. It teaches you about the operating systems of your brain. People love it. There's also Lizard Wizard Komodo, which is free. And it's a email-based training. It, tra it teaches you, it gives you training uh, lessons and tasks to complete uh, to train your lizard brain, which will make you powerful. I call it lizard wizard because if you master your lizard, you will become a wizard. And if you become a wizard, you can control your own environment and yourself highly effectively. Yeah, yeah. 152 people, not bad. See, this goes to consistency. When people ask me about learning to code and developing business, I say consistency is the key, is the key, consistency. Right. Um, so when I used to do my live streams consistently, I would have 250, 300 or more people. Now I do them every once in a while. We're down to 150. I'm not complaining. Except for that thumbs down. That's not good. Yeah, give me a thumbs up if you like this stream, by the way. It encourages the YouTubes. Uh, Peter says, tips for noobs reaching out and networking with people who are in the industry with the intention of asking those people for a job help references. I'm learning front end on month four. Thank you from New York. Uh, so I would uh, start getting into some, maybe some Twitter spaces. Matthew could talk about that. Matthew is on the stream right now. He's part of the uh, Discord. What you should do is network in my Discord. Discord below, link below. Click on that link. The uh, Code Long and Profit Discord, lots of good people. You can start your networking there. Um, you don't have to ask for jobs. Just network, start writing skills, build build things, show people what you're building. What will happen is they'll see you, and then they'll start querying you about whether or not you want to work. So that's what I would do. Don't If you're a beginner and you still don't know what you do, don't, don't bother people about jobs yet. It will come, you know. Uh, if Node.js is a mess, well, okay, we did that one. Uh, hold on. I plan to make 50K a month after I'm done learning. Oh, there you go. What's up, Mahir Karim? Welcome to the stream. All right, how are we doing? Oof, already 35 minutes. What time is it? Okay, I'm going to have to... Guys, if you are a beginner or even an intermediate, take whatever first job you get and keep looking for better, more paying jobs while on the first job. Exactly. Don't quit that job so soon, that first job. You don't want to be somebody who's, you know, on your resume, uh, three months here, four months here. Employers are going to be going, ah, I don't know if I like that. I don't like quitters. You know, if you get that first job, unless it's horrible, try to keep it at least a year, you know, so you can say, look, I got one year experience. Looks good, right? Why? Because somebody hires you, there's a ramp up time for new developers, right? You got, they, you got to learn the, what's going on in the office. You got to learn the code base, how they like to work. So there's a training period. So they don't want to have a guy where they train you up for two months and then you quit and, you know, two months later, that's a lot of money lost for them. You don't want to do that, you know? I got another super chat I should get to here. Did it come through? Hold on, hold on. Here we go. Chris, how are you, man? Hey, Steph, 48, 48 years old, I guess. 49 Monday, hey, happy birthday. Uh, worked my way from help desk to cybersecurity analyst, hate it. 
want to get into coding front end, best place to start. Start with the basics, man. Start with the fundamentals. Uh, by the way, you'll be able to uh, leverage your cybersecurity background to a certain extent. And yes, just, you know, I would just start with the basics. I suggest my either my solo courses below. I'm biased, of course. Or my mentoring program if you want the full track. So there you go. And yeah, let me see what else we got here. Another super chat. Okay, guys. What uh, MA degree is best to find high paying job? I don't know. Uh, you know, if you go into, uh, if you want to get a degree, you don't need it, that's for sure. But if you want to get a degree, I would get into computer science, computer engineering, that kind of thing. Uh, thank you. We'll just join the Discord. Yeah, join the Discord. Discord is below. Let me see if, um, hey, so if, if somebody could join the Discord, make sure I put their good Discord link there. I think it's still relevant. Let me just get to my Discord. Hold on. All right. Uh, hold on. Give me a second. So we get to Discord. Let's go here. There we go. Here's the Discord. Live, live Discord action going for you. Let's go to welcome, see if anybody's joining here. All right. See, since I've been in, all these people have joined since I, uh, today, all today, all today. Okay, somebody just joined. People are joining. Yeah, so join the Discord. Link below. You see there's a lot of people, a lot of activity. Uh, introductions. Um, new introductions. Got all kinds of discussion. Developer talk, coding help, WordPress, workflows, all kinds of good stuff in here. Uh, yeah, so there you go. I invite you to take a look at the Discord. It's worthwhile if you want a community. Uh, for a beginner, I recommend LAMP more opportunities. Yeah, LAMP is uh, Linux. Um, ah, what the hell is it? LAMP is uh, PHP. <laughs> I can't figure what that acronym stands for. It's full stack PHP. It's MySQL, something uh, MySQL, PHP, uh, Linux, and uh, Apache. There we go. Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Uh, how do you choose your programming major when you're a beginner? I don't know. In the first year, you should be able to dabble a little bit, and then that will give you some choice in terms of, uh, it will give you some ability to make a proper choice in that regard. Steph, what are the top attributes you look in at in a person when considering to hire them? I have a rough idea of what to look for, but would love to hear more experienced opinions about what to look for. Well, first and foremost, I look for people who can communicate well. I look for people who have um, attributes. Somebody who's open-minded, open-minded, interested in different technologies. Um, yeah, those are my, my main thing. Easy to get along with, open-mindedness, not a technology zealot. Somebody likes the coding. Somebody likes to explore different things, you know? Yeah, how are we doing? Oh, all right. I'll answer a few more questions when I have to go. Yeah, exactly. I'm worried about chat GPT potentially replacing programmers in the future once it is connected to the internet. Currently, it's only trained up into 2020. What do you think that happened after that? Uh, Vitaly, no, don't worry about that. Uh, if you know, if you do any professional development, you know that writing the code is just a very small part of the job, really. I think you should learn chat GPT, and I think you should leverage it uh, for your work. So I wouldn't be seeing it as, as a, I see it as a tool. What is the best master's degree in CS to have for a high paying job? Please rank them from best to worst. Master in AI, cybersecurity, data science. Ooh. I would go AI first, data science. Mm, I would go AI first. The other three, I, I don't have an opinion on it, in all honesty. Um, the other two, rather. AI would be first. Data science second, perhaps. Aaron, hey man, how are you? Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, Steph, I've been eating up your... I'm looking to get out of the restaurant management business. You should talk to Matthew. Just join the Discord. Talk to Matthew. He was in the restaurant business. He can give you some uh, insight into his transition. He's part of the mentoring group. I'm looking to get out of restaurant management business. I'm learning C-sharp, 
because my wife has a well-paying job at a company that uses a lot of C sharp. Love listening to your advice. Ah, very cool. If you got a contact and leverage that contact, has your wife talked to any uh, co-workers or people who may have some knowledge about whether or not? I tell you, Siri is, uh, has been getting on my nerves lately. Siri keeps answering questions I don't ask. That was Siri in the background. I don't know if you heard it. Yeah, I lost my train of thought there. Live long and prosper, Uncle Steph. Well, you too. Code long and profit. A great course is totally recommended to anyone who wants to learn some proper fundamentals and more. Best wishes from Romania. Wow, best wishes to you. Oh, by the way, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. That's good. How are we? Okay, I'm going to have to head out soon because i got to go out and meet some friends. As somebody who wants to be a front-end developer, do you recommend moving to a specific state? No. No, not really. Just get yourself really good at development and then the jobs will come to you and you can decide. I've been coding for like two years in native front end, but I stopped for six months because of school and lost my discipline. Any advice to get back? Uh, I am in university now. Well, just set up a schedule. Say you're going to do 20 minutes a day or half an hour every other day and slowly build up the habit. Remember, here's a... A lizard wizard lesson. Lizard wizard is my psych training course. Uh, habit creates attitude. So what you do, your action, that's a better way of stating. What you do every day will change your attitude about something. So if you want to develop the attitude of, or the, the disposition, if you will, to want to code a little bit every day, just start doing a little bit every day and your, your brain will follow how you act is how you will align yourself emotionally. I don't know if that makes sense. If you want more detail, check out Lizard Wizard. I tried to get chat GPT to write a very specialized piece of code and it was unable to. Yeah, that's it. It's an assistive tool. Like you could use it to create boiler, boilerplate code, maybe point it at a chunk of an algorithm that you may want to see if it could optimize. Sometimes it gets it, sometimes it does. It's something to look at, you know? Um, it is, but there's a lot of work into it. It's like you're looking at four years, I would mean, I, I would say. Yeah, here's Matthew. So he was a chef for 23 years. In his 40s, he found uh, me and he joined the mentoring program. And now he is a full-time developer and he's doing uh, quite well. Thank you very much. So there's, uh, there's uh, Matthew. He's in the Discord. You got any questions about transitioning from one career into coding? He may be the one to hit up. Um, hello from Hungary. First time catching your stream. Thank you for everything you do. I appreciate it. Thanks. I'm glad I could help. I'm here to um, pass on my information to you guys. So I've been in development since 94 commercially and I've been in business longer than that. So in this, these streams and my videos on YouTube, I'm basically sharing my decades of experience to save you guys a lot of time if you want if you want to take advantage of that. All right, guys. Um, okay, last one here. First time watching live. Hey, welcome to the stream. Loved your lizard wizard course. Ah, cool. Uh, do you think lizard brain can help explain the hysteria behind all our jobs will be replaced by AI really soon? Yes, it does. I'll tell you why. So there's a lot of hysteria. People are really scared that the AI revolution will replace all kinds of developer jobs tomorrow. Um, that's natural. Whenever you see change, our brains, specifically our lower emotional lizard brains, monkey and lizard, there's a distinction between the two, but we won't get into it here. Uh, our lower brains, which we do not control directly anyway, our lower brains, uh, are fearful, fearful of change, because change could be dangerous, you know? So our lower brains is automatically programmed, literally programmed through evolutionary uh, processes to fear anything that's new. So AI is very new, and AI is seen as a potential threat. So what our brain does to preserve us is it, it artificially amplifies uh, potential threats. So the threat level of something might be like, let's say one in a hundred, but our, our, our uh, lizard brains will make it a 10 
will perceive it as a 10 on 100 and create the emotions and the anxieties accordingly. So uh, that's why you have the hysteria. Our, our lizard brains, generally speaking, don't like change. So you can use your higher cognitive brain to slowly reprogram your lizard brain to not fear the change so much. But it's a process like anything else. You can learn to fight as a boxer, MMA dude or dudette, but if you don't train it on a regular basis, even though the skills are, they work. You know, the techniques in jiu-jitsu and Thai boxing and boxing, they're very effective. Uh, they're very effective. But if you don't train it, it's not going to be useful to you. The worst thing is, is to have somebody who's a junior uh, who's just started learning how to fight. They're going to be the easiest targets because they're predictable and mechanical. But anyway, that's another story. I did martial arts for a long, long time. So uh, I don't know how I got into that thread now. I lost my train of thought. Let's see. Boom, 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 boom. I forget. Oh, well, what are we going to do? All right, that's it. I'm going to have to let you go because I have to head out. I hope you enjoyed the streams. Thanks for very much for the likes and the thumbs. I appreciate all the uh, super chats. I hope I was able to answer uh, your questions to your satisfaction. So uh, until next time, if you like these type of streams, please comment below. Say more streams, more streams. You know, it's 100 of you. And that's pretty much it. Have a great weekend. I'll leave you with my theme song. People ask me, I get it, I guess this, this is my, this is a song I produced for myself. I, I, I got the drum beat going on my, my acoustic drum kit and then I reproduced it on the uh, iPad, on the computer, and then I added my own riffs. So this is my tune. All right, let's, let's hit it. Um, is it going? Okay, here we go. Ciao. Thank you.